Hello, my name is Jeff Shaw, and I'll be the host for today's episode of In the Studio. Joining me today is another is uh, Ning Wan. She is the chair of the Davis Cross Cultural Foundation. Ning has been down here before for the Davis International Film Festival, which she produces each year. The Davis Cross Cultural Foundation is a nonprofit that's been around in Davis for quite some years now. Today, we're going to be talking about this project that uh, the Davis Cross Cultural Foundation initiated in this region called the uh, Chung Sum Project or the Chi Pao Project. It's a long scroll project that was initiated in China. And Ning's going to talk a little bit about uh, what it all entails and what you see before you here. Ning, thanks for coming in today. Oh, I'm glad to be here. Uh, let's start off by um, telling us a little bit about the dress itself, uh, the Chang Sam or the Chi Pao dress. Um, Chang Sam is the English translation for Chi Pao. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the dress itself and um, maybe some of the cultural significance of it in China? Yeah, so Chi Pao is uh, uh, named the Chan uh, Chinese national dress in 1920s, and uh, it, it has this beautiful curve and you know all the Chinese people love it and the typical uh, Changshan uh, Chi Pao has this corner stream and uh, handmade buttons uh, so uh, many many Chinese women uh -huh. uh, love Chi Pao. And so uh, these are and this is a button or this is a this hat, button how it's actually, attached? Actually this is a, a button um, so this is kind of a new design uh, we have the zip but before if we take a that one, uh -huh. you know, you don't have the zip on the back. That's my first chi pao. So over in the corner, we have a, um, a chi pao hanging here. That's uh, if the camera can get a shot of that. And as you can see, uh, this is uh, this is a the more traditional. traditional. Yes. Uh, the design has been changing over the years uh, from this one in the corner. And uh, to this kind. And uh, this one in the corner. Uh, is it uh, when do you suppose this was produced? Uh, uh, I think this is uh, 1980 late 1980s, and the, the flower hand, hand and bread. And what were you saying significant about the, the, the attachment? It's the buttons, you I know. See. Actually, you have to open here, and then... Up at the top uh, there? Uh -huh. The top there, and there's no, like, a zip for this uh, dress. Got it. And so, um, so... So this one is different. This is a new design. So uh, this one that you're holding up here is different because it has the yeah, zip and yeah. everything in the back. But the tradition, these are the buttons you have to actually, you know. So culturally, what, why is was this dress ever uh, controversial in Chinese culture or uh, is it always been an accepted dress or how, you know, uh, can you tell me some of the history of it or why it uh, is culturally significant? Um, it's because this dress has been uh, in the Chinese history for a long, long time, maybe 300 years old. Wow. So people are arguing if this one is from Han Dynasty or from Qing Dynasty. I see. And then the other people say, oh, it's because the uh, Republic of Time of the China, because uh, it named uh, as a national dress in 1920s. And uh, like uh, all the students wear this uh, as a uniform. Uh -huh. and so that makes it's very popular. It's kind of for everyone. And so it's uh, is it because so the dress itself was sort of uh, an expression of um, the people um, the Chinese, independence or sort of yeah the Chinese culture and uh, symbolize the uh, the independence and the the freedom the woman you know have. I uh, see. Yeah. Similar to. Um, I guess in our culture, you know, the women wearing pants is not necessarily it was a it was a new a new uh, trend that sort of symbolizes some sort of uh, uh, independence or uh, yeah yes. Um, so let's go back to the actual the scroll project then. So uh, the uh, this uh, global Chinese um, Chi Pao long scroll. Uh, what is that project and when was that initiated? So this project uh, was initiated. I. I think it was like two years ago, okay. uh, maybe more than two years ago from Tianjin. That's my, uh, I graduated from the university, Nankai University. Um, the producer, uh, Liu Bing, um, he, he has this idea. He wants to, you know, let the uh, Chinese woman or maybe not even Chinese woman wear this Chinese tradition uh, custom. Yes. And they want to make a Guinness World Record out of it. Uh, to make a, uh, a very so, long right. So the idea, from what I understand, is that uh, uh, the idea is to set the Guinness World Record yes. for the longest scroll. Yes. And um, 
how did he, why do you think he chose uh, photos of women in this dress to set the record for the longest scroll in um, the world? I believe it's because uh, for us, as far as I know, like uh, everyone I know, they love Chi Pao and it's a national dress. I see. Yeah, so it's very uh, symbolic to the Chinese woman. Okay. Yeah. So this is a this is almost a uh, tribute then by uh, by featuring um, Chinese women on wearing these unique dresses on this scroll. Um, so what inspired you to uh, start this? Uh, when did you first find out about this global um, global uh, project, the global uh, Chinese uh, Chi Pao Long Scroll project? Uh, it's like more than it's like one. More than one year ago, okay. uh, I heard from my um, classmates from China say, you know, there's something going on. And also I have an alumna in Davis. She told me, you know, this project is original from our college. And then say, I'm going to contact them. And because yes. I just love Chipa so much, all these dresses are belong to me. Yes. So I have like a collection of Chipa. So uh, tell me how this, how, how you've, you're planning to do uh, more of these next, this coming fall, but tell me uh, how the logistics of this project. So you decided I'm going to do this. That means you had to, you had to bring the dresses. You had to uh, find w women to participate. Uh, how did you find women to participate? So um, this is a very big project because uh, uh, we uh, found like a, there are like more than 240 women in local region in Sacramento area. Yes. So I, I just posted on the internet and then friends, told in friends, so we said we are doing this project. And the team bring like more than 200 cheap house from China. Okay, so and the cheap house, actually they brought the dresses They brought from dresses China. from China and, okay. uh, and they do the makeup for you, they do the hair for you, just make you look so beautiful and everybody Lovely, you know. And how do the how do you know whether or not the dresses will fit? Did people have to change sew the dresses or no? They just pin it. So oh, okay. yeah, if it's too big, they use the the pin at the back. So did this all happen in one day then? These photographs or um, they did a very fast, uh, great job. Um, there are like four makeup artists and the two photographers come to this region. For 240 women. For 240, we did it in four days. We four rent days. A, a hotel okay. and uh, like everyone, you know, can dress there and, uh, yes. and they did all the shots and the makeup, it's beautiful. So then the idea is then you uh, take the photographs, you get them printed on the special scroll. Now how, where do you get this? You have this printed at some, uh, in some special way so that they're all side, look side by side. Yes, yeah, so um, this is uh, also a tradition Chinese uh, style for the long scroll right. because Chinese painters they so do a lot of uh, this a, kind of painting. I have a smaller one here just to give an idea of uh, of the traditional. This this particular is a single um, single scroll of a single shot, but. Uh, this so this style is a traditional and tell me a little bit about well, you took the single shots and combined them into the log. Yeah, so the took the uh, actually took like thirty uh, some pictures and they found one uh -huh. uh, the like because the dress needs to be different, you know, and then um, they made this like a uh, uh, painting. Okay. The way they do it, they make it look like painting, old, ancient, and the color looks like the tra tradition Chinese painting. I see. Yeah. And the idea is that this scroll that you've produced will be sent to uh, the person who initiated the global Chinese uh, Qi Pao Long Scroll project, and they will be combined so that they can uh, they can then enter this as the in the Guinness World Records as the longest scroll ever produced. Yeah. So what they did is they have uh, uh, so what we have is a local. Uh, section. Mm -hmm. they, they went to so many places and they made a very, very long one, okay. combined them together. So where are some of the other places that you know of? Or? Uh, they went to Japan, they went to Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. Okay. Of course, China, Hong Kong. Yes. Um, and the many cities like uh, uh, in the United States, uh, they came to San Francisco. Uh, there were like four, more than 400 ladies participating in San Francisco and uh, New York and uh, New, Zealand, uh, New Jersey. Uh, does San Francisco have a, a 
a project like this going on as well? Yes, they uh -huh. did. Yeah, Excellent. we did it like back to back. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and I guess I should emphasize that uh, each of these photos are of different, uh, different women. Maybe the same, similar dress, but they're different women. Every single. Yeah. Photo, so, so every uh, single woman can only, you know, have one photo in the scroll. In so the entire we, scroll. In the entire scroll. So do they have to decide to be on the San Francisco scroll or the Capitol scroll? Um, or? It's all by region. So okay. here, you know, we have this Capitol and the Sacramento, big Sacramento area. Yes. And we also do the small ones. So we have Davis small. Yes. Scroll. So you have so uh, I we brought that, but it's a it's a similar size scroll to this, and it's just the Davis scroll. Yes, then we like have twenty people. Yeah. So well, people can uh, obviously you'll give that to people who participated yes. so that they can hang it in their wall. Yeah. So this is really a record of uh, of local um, Chinese women, uh, deep down to the Davis city, and then expanding it out to the larger region, and it'll yeah. be attached. So this is going to be a is someone keeping track of who's Who's already taken the photo and or is it uh, honor system? <laughs> no, actually, I, I have all these, you know, people's name listed. And, yes. Yeah. So and if you do another one uh, this fall, will you uh, invite women who have not previously appeared on the Yes, scroll? we will want to have new people to participate because you, um, the project is we want to get as many people as possible and yes. for the record. Excellent. And do you have any idea when? Uh, the record will be met or beat or what, you know, how many years will this take, do you suppose? Oh, I don't even know. But right now, they have like more than 36,000 women participate. And it's not only Chinese anymore. Actually, here we have, a, uh, that's a professor from Sac State. Okay. And uh, So you know all, and you know all of these women? I kind of, kind of I, yeah. I know them, yes. <laughs> sure. So, and so you're saying it's not just limited to uh, Chinese women now, or it's, no, uh, it's uh, no, it's not. Yeah. Okay. But it's it's a way we want to you know uh, express the Chinese culture and yes. let the people know what the Chinese people you know doing and the custom. It's it's a way for us to do the culture exchange. Yes, I think this is an excellent way to uh, for people to understand some Chinese culture and uh, especially to highlight uh, all the women. Um, you know, I'm curious as to, you mentioned one of them is a professor and, you yeah, know, you know, yeah. and these types of things. I, I imagine uh, uh, for women to know that they're part of a larger scroll and, and the largest scroll in the world uh, I think it would probably uh, make them feel empowered. And the fact that they're wearing these uh, dresses, too, is probably a, is a, yeah, is a we, nice... Yeah, we thought about that. You know, we're thinking about if this is in a museum, maybe like uh, 100 years later, uh, you know, our children will say, wow, that's my grandma. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It'll be kind of, they'll be able to see the scroll and find their grandmother or, yeah, or, yeah. Uh, so or see their relatives on this uh, world-setting scroll. So it's a very... Uh, it's a great project, and then documenting this is a no small, no small effort. So, well, I wish you the best of luck on this. So we'll keep tabs on it and see and find out when the record is set. And I hope this fall, when you uh, get more women to take this photo and uh, and get more dresses done and hire all the photographers and get this printed, uh, that it goes very successfully. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Yeah. You've been tuned to Davis uh, Media Accesses in the studio. Uh, please tune in um, every uh, Thursday to uh, see a new episode of In the Studio. My name is Jeff Shaw, and thank you very much for tuning in. For more information about the project, the website will be put up, and you can go visit that website about this. So thanks again, Ning, for coming in, and we'll have thank you in you. again to uh, talk about some other subjects related okay, to Chinese yeah, culture. That will be great. Thank you very thanks. much. Thanks.